episode five, we came across a rather strange term for a sewing technique called stitching in the ditch. I'm going to show you what that means and how to master it. And after that, we're going to look at the wide variety of snap fasteners and how to install them. We're going to look at what it means to stitch in the ditch, which is basically sewing a line of stitching in the middle of the join of your seam. Now there's special feet that you can get for your machines. I don't use these. I do everything by eye. And again, stitching right in the center of the join. So we have a prepared section here with some gathers in it and some straight section. And what I try to do when I'm stitching in the ditch is leave a little bit of extra fabric on the waistband or the facing so that you can roll it over and cover up your stitch in the ditch. You can also use a back stitch by hand and this takes a little bit longer but it accomplishes the same thing and more invisibly so. So now we're going to look at a straight section and we're going to stitch in the ditch of this waistband between the band and the trouser. You can see here that the seam has been sewn together with the waistband, opened out and pressed flat. So if you were to stretch these two apart, your garment and the waistband, you can actually see the line of stitching. And this is where your needle is going to go, right in the middle. So how that gets reinforced is with the inside facing here. It's been prepared so that when it's all finished, it'll cover up that raw edge. Now, we're going to stitch in the ditch, and I like to have my needle fall to the right of the ditch. It's just, I find it just more comfortable. So here we line the needle up, and we're gonna work very slowly, and you can see here that I'm pulling both sections apart just to keep the fabric taut so that it's easier for me to see exactly where that needle needs to fall. And where I'm most comfortable is the needle falls just to the right of that ditch. So we carry on, just keep checking that your work is flat, that your facing is indeed under your work. Um, and we'll come up to this dart section here. I've put the dart in because I wanted to talk about um, it, it can be difficult when you're going over a section like a dart or a pleat or a gather. The needle wants to wobble a little bit. So um, it's just something you need to be a little bit more careful of here. And when you're finished, you can take your work out and then you can just check how you've done. Make sure everything is invisible. And you have indeed stitched right in the middle. And there's, in this case, a little bit of extra fabric to just roll over and conceal that line of stitching. Now we're going to look at a gathered section. So I have some gathers and I have some pleats here. And again, this can be a little tricky, not as easy as the straight section. So let's say this top part was actually the bodice of a dress or the yoke of a skirt or a pair of trousers. Because it's going to hang straighter, it, you're not going to have any additional room to roll over and hide your stitches. So you have to be a little bit more careful. In this case, I've prepared a simple binding. So this could be a waistband or the binding on the edge of a sleeve, say. Once again, I'm going to work so that my needle falls to the right of the ditch and I'm going to be extra careful to keep all my work flat, make sure that facing is indeed underneath, and make sure that the work to the right, the gathers, are all pulled taut. And I don't know if you can see it in this, in this film, but I'm actually pulling both sections apart. So the tinier waistband on the left and the work on the right, once I have everything all set up and even, I'm going to pull each side apart just so it exposes that ditch a little easier. When you go over gathers, you can kind of sense that the machine wants to wobble a little bit over this section. 
but just work slowly. Once again, check your facing, make sure everything is flat and neat. You can separate the gathers with your fingers so that you can see that exposed ditch. And here we go. I can tell that I've overrun onto the waistband. So this isn't a time to panic at all. Just stop your work, take the stitches out, and clean everything up on both sides. And then just pick up where you left off. So here we go. Check your facing again underneath. Get your section all organized and just go back to that point that uh, didn't go so accurately and just pick up. And once again, just a light tug on both sides, both of your hands. And I'm going a little bit faster because it may be that I was chugging along a bit too slowly. And that's what caused it to ride up on the facing. So now we've gone over the gathers, we've gone over the pleats, and now we've come to the end. And once again, we have, because this is a, a binding, we have a little bit extra room just to roll over and cover our stitches. And now we've seen two examples, and I want to show you what it looks like on the underside. So you've stitched on the ditch, and in this gathered section, which is a, a tight little binding, you can see that we've just caught the facing in the straight waistband. You can see the invisible stitch in the ditch there and the finished edge on the inside of the trouser that indeed does cover all the raw edge of that waistband. So there's two examples of stitching in the ditch. There you have the technique for stitching in the ditch, and I hope you found that all very helpful. Now we're going to move on to a variety of snap fasteners and how to install them. There are so many different kinds of fasteners, buttons, button kits, gripper snaps, and each one of these kits come with its own set of tools to install the fastener. So it's a good idea to keep everything separate so that when you need them in a hurry, you can reach for them and keep the directions. You may think you know them, but you can forget so easily. We're going to install two different snap fasteners, a metal and a plastic. Each set contains a top. And then either an inward end or an outward end. And each set of these poppers or snaps has its separate tool. So this is a pair of pliers and it has this attachment that holds the top and the bottom sections of this popper. Here's a metal set. Again, we have a decorative top and an outward end, the bottom and the inward end. The outward end poppers over the inward end. And to do that, it's installed with this tool that has this type of an attachment where both the top and the bottom fit right in. And it's struck with a hammer to complete the installation. So now we're going to install a plastic snap using a pair of pliers. I've prepared a placket. I know what side of the placket is going to popper over the, under, the undersection. And I've marked the placement with a pin. I've transferred this to the underside just to make sure that everything's going to line up. And we have four pieces of plastic here. We have the outward section and its cap, and that's going to popper over the inward section and its cap using the pliers. So we're going to start installing the outward section, and I need to prepare the hole. So take your awl and just twist it lightly through the fabric if you're too aggressive with this, you could split a thread and you can cause a run in the fabric. Transfer with the awl again to your marking on the underside of the placket and work just carefully until you the awl pierces all layers of fabric. We've got four layers here that we're creating the same hole in. Um, check it. If you need to push the awl through again on the underside, 
you can do that just to make sure you have a nice clean hole. And now you're going to take your top section. This is the thing that looks like the thumbtack and you're going to push it through that hole and make sure it goes all the way through. And now you can take the pair of pliers and you can see how that top section, looks like a thumbtack, rests right in that white plastic attachment. Now take your outer popper or snap, line everything up with your fingers, and before you do anything else, I like to draw the fabric away from the top section and just check that everything is in line before you squeeze the pliers together. Nice firm grip. And when you remove the pliers, you can see. Nice clean job. It's in there, it's stable, it's secure. And now we're ready to install the inward section. Check first that you've got this right way around and it is indeed going to work. It's going to pop her over because once you get these things in, there's no turning back. So this time, the end cap goes on the underside. And again, it's pushed through these two layers of fabric. You can use an awl or you can use a pencil eraser if, you're, if it isn't going through easily. Put on that inward section then. And now once again this rests right in that attachment, the white attachment of the pliers. Make sure everything is in stable and then matching up. And then pop on this inward section. Line it all up first gently. Draw the fabric away from that white attachment and then give it a nice firm squeeze the pliers. There we go. You can see that that's on securely and that everything is going to line up now when you pop the two together. It can be a little hard to undo these, I find, but do check it before you go any further with your work. So there's the plastic snap all installed. Now we're going to install the metal snap using a little attachment. We see our four pieces here, and they're going to be set in this attachment and struck with a hammer to complete the installation. Once again, I've marked my position. I've got the outward end. It's going to pop her over the inward end, and I'm starting with this decorative end, putting it in the center of my button position. This is a little trickier because you have a set of prongs instead of one with the plastic snap and you have to isolate all these metal prongs so that they're all exposed and everything is lying flat. You can do this with your hands or here I go, I'm using this all because sometimes that just helps to move the fabric over these prongs. So once you have them all sticking out of the fabric then you can put the outward section and rest it. There's a groove there in the bottom and that rests right in that ring of prongs. And instead of the pliers, we have this attachment tool. Um, one side rests over the decorative end and then the other side fits over the outward end. Check first that everything is in line and you're happy and everything seems stable and move the fabric into a position where you can maneuver everything and then just hit it four or five times with a hammer right over that center of the attachment and you pull it out and you can see here now that everything has been installed it's correct it's secure so now we're half finished and that outward end is going to pop her over the inward end and check that this is all you've got the right pieces and this is all going to work. And now we move over to this under section of the placket. And then you can use a pin 
to check that you're in the center of your marking and that everything is going to line up correctly. So there we are through the center. And then once again, you're going to push the fabric over this set of prongs, isolate every single one of them so that you can see the prongs evenly. And this is the only way that it, it works. And this is all in the setup. Okay, once all the prongs are showing through and you're happy, then just rest the inward section. Again, there's a set of grooves and that fits over nicely. You can't get this wrong. And then you get your attachment and you set this over these two metal pieces. And take your time with this. Make sure everything is set up. Maneuver your fabric around so that your work is lying flat and get that hammer right in the center of the attachment and strike that firmly and there we have it now the metal snap is installed you can see that it's well you can hear <laughs> it's a little bit easier uh, to work with the metal versus the plastic so now we can compare the different types of snap fasteners. We have the plastic. You can see it's a little bit clumsy to undo. I've sewn on a metal snap fastener here, which I find a bit cleaner and easier uh, to, to work with. And also it, they can be repaired if something gets damaged, where it's much more difficult to repair a plastic snap. And you can also buy this tape this works so well, particularly on children's wear, um, because it's so much easier to install and everything is spaced out for you. And it comes in a variety of colors. You can even dye them to match your garment. So there's a comparison of different kinds of snap fastening. So next week we have episode six, which is Reduce, Reuse and Recycle Week. And that's particularly appropriate right now for the whole of the fashion industry. So watch this space.